but it's just like the little tidbits of knowledge that folks might not have if you've never done this before. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Marissa, and I make a bunch of different videos on this channel, one of which being like a monthly reset, and in the past I used to do just like dedicated plan with me videos. Now I incorporate those in my monthly reset videos. But for the past three years or more, I've been making digital planners that I use on my iPad to plan instead of like paper planners and whatnot. And since then, I've gotten a lot of people who already digital plan, so of course they use my planners. I sell them on my Etsy. I'll link them down below if you guys are interested in them. And a lot of folks, of course, use them, but then there's a lot of folks that comment and are like, I don't know how to use it, and digital planning sounds so fun. I just don't even know how to do it. I don't know where to start. And then there's another group of people that, you know, buy my planner, and then I get messages of like, hey, this isn't working. How do I work this? And I always walk them through it, and it always works. But it's just like the little tidbits of knowledge that folks might not have if you've never done this before. Now, there are a lot of different apps that you can use to digital plan. In layman's terms, Digital planning is just a PDF file that is linked because it's a PDF. So I could like click through different pages on my computer as like a PDF notebook, but you are importing it into some app that allows you to edit PDFs. That's like the gist of it. So it's kind of like a hack to a system or to an app that was made to probably do other things. And then a lot of people use it for digital planning. Specifically, this tutorial is just going to be a beginner's look walkthrough of GoodNotes. That is my favorite app to use when it comes to digital planning. There's a lot of other ones but I only have used GoodNotes and probably only will use GoodNotes. If I ever switch it up, I'll let you guys know. So I'm gonna be walking you guys through the basics of GoodNotes. Essentially, those like beginner questions that you have no idea where to start or what I'm doing if you ever watched a plan with me and you're like, how is she doing all of this? That's kind of what we're gonna go through today. I've already filmed the tutorial side of it. I'm just filming this intro and outro, but while I was filming it, I already have like one or two other videos that are locked away that I wanna do to dive a little bit deeper into digital planning and GoodNotes and stuff. So let me know if there's any other like tutorial type videos that you guys want for your digital planning journey or good notes or whatever Because there's a lot to it and I do think the interface is very user-friendly um, You just kind of take some time to like explore I guess you could say so hopefully this video helps you if you have you know your iPad or whatever And you haven't yet but go download good notes and get ready to sit down with me So you can kind of click all of these buttons with me and we can figure this shit out together But if you are new here and you like playing with me videos or monthly reset videos, good note videos, whatever, subscribe down below because we do all of that and more over here. And I do have to add a disclaimer that I am feeling very congested today. So I'm sorry if I sound a little different. I did want to say that because of course this is going to be like a voiceover kind of tutorial video, <laughs> which is probably like the worst time to do it is when I'm feeling sick. But nonetheless, this video is going up because I do know that school is starting and it's probably already started. And I would just highly suggest using a digital planner for your college or high school. I do sell an academic planner that runs like, you know, semesterly. So starts in August through, you know, next semester in 2024 that I will also link down below. Let's dive right in. Alrighty, this may be a very weird look at all of this. You're not gonna be able to see my whole screen throughout all of it, mainly because I just wanna show you the main parts of Good Notes because this is where all the magic happens. So we're gonna be focusing on this top bar of my iPad here. First things first, this is kind of like your home page of Good Notes. You'll be able to see all of the documents that you have, which are basically notebooks. Since this is a very entry level tutorial on how this works, I'm not going to go through the entire nitty gritty. However, when you import a new digital planner, for example, that you bought off of Etsy, it'll show up here, which is what these are. This is a digital sticker notebook that I made myself that holds all of my digital stickers that I have made in it. And they're just different stickers on each page. And I can definitely break down how to create that notebook because it is different. I just kind of want to show you what all the buttons do. Not really a tutorial on how to do anything. This is where you'll get to choose how these are organized. I only have three in here right now, but you could organize them by name, by the date, by the type. You can also look at them in a list view if you prefer that. I like this because I like to look at the big icons. You also have like a notification section. If you are working on a document that's shared between people, you guys can like leave comments back and forth with each other. If you want to select different notebooks, that's what this button does. And I could click on ones 
and delete them or move them, duplicate them, export them, etc. And then this is your settings, of course. So you can look at different templates, you can change your settings, look at your trash before they're like gone forever if you accidentally deleted something you didn't mean to. Now let's go ahead and jump into a planner. So I'm going to click on my Marissa 2023. This is just my normal planner that I use in all my plan with me's. And we have more buttons up here, which is what I was referring to before. So this arrow, of course, is going to take you back to that main menu. The button with the four boxes is going to bring up basically an icon list of all the pages in your planner and they'll number them. You can scroll through if you're wanting to jump to a certain page quicker that maybe isn't hyperlinked. All of the digital planners that I make are hyperlinked, which helps you navigate, but this is just another way to do that. You can actually make certain pages your favorites with this little bookmark icon here. If there's pages that you really like to visit a lot, you can kind of bookmark them and they will show up in your favorites column here. So if you have a really, really large notebook that you don't want to go searching for all the time that isn't hyperlinked, that is a great way to get to those pages that you use all the time. And the same thing like your favorites, you have an area for outlines, which I don't personally use, but here's just a snapshot of what that page looks like if you're looking to create an outline. On this thumbnail page too, this is where you would move pages around if you want to, if you hard select them you can drag them and reorder pages in your notebooks specifically even with ones that are hyperlinked like the ones that I make you can still move around your pages and they will stay hyperlinked for example some of my pages have these blank like brain dump pages and if you want one at the beginning of the month and one at the end you can click this little arrow here and a menu will pop up to add a blank page before this page add a page after it you can duplicate this page you can move this page somewhere else export it open it in a new window or trash the page so if you were to duplicate this page, you could then move it to the beginning or the end of the book, wherever you're wanting it to be. The next button here is actually super helpful. And I don't know if a lot of people know you could do this because what is really cool with digital planning is that you're writing on it like a planner, but it's all digital. So of course this is, you know, my handwriting here. I'm writing down like I would in a normal planner, but the great way about it being digital is you can search things that you've written. So if I want to search recording, just cause that's the one that's right there, it'll show me all the pages that I've written recording on and I can jump to that page. So on page 18, I wrote recording at 11 a.m. I also wrote recordings here on page 34, page 46, and you can kind of hop around. So if you are doing, you know, actual planning and you don't remember when that dentist appointment is, you can search dentist appointment and it'll take you to the page where you wrote that on, which I think is super freaking helpful. The next button here is your export button. If you're wanting to save a page of your planner, this is how you would do that. You can also share this link to collaborate. So let's say you have this planner for your household and you want to share it with your partner. You can do this and that way they can view comments and edit it just like you do and you guys can collaborate on it together but if you go back that's where this would come in handy so if your partner was making edits or making comments on something that you guys are collaborating on they would show up here so you guys know like what's been edited and what hasn't been you can print your pages and you can even go into like a presentation mode this next button depending on how you're using of course good notes this is really helpful if you're using it as an actual like note taking app for school or you know college classes whatever it may be but for digital planning i don't really use this a Lot, but this is essentially an area that you can start recording like a voice memo for this notebook and it'll show up on all the pages so if i click this you'll see that this countdown is starting so i'm actually recording right now and you can record whether it's a lecture or you're just like reciting a to-do list or anything that you're wanting to do you'll stop it whenever you're done and then this little icon will show up on all the pages that you have a voice memo for it and then you can listen to it you'll see that this countdown is starting. So I'm actually recording right now. And that's something that'll live in this document or this notebook. I'm sure that there are people that use them, of course, but I really just use this for digital planning. So I don't have a use for it, but I wanted to let you guys know that that exists. And then hopping over to this side, this little bookmark thing is the same way that you would kind of favorite a page like we did before. So you don't have to do it from this icon, but you can because you're able to kind of like click through them faster without having to swipe through pages. But this isn't the only way that you can add something to your favorites here that you can access through the four squares. Your little page with a plus is the button that you use if you're wanting to add a page before the page that you're currently on, after the page that you're currently on, or the last page of your notebook. And you can, it'll offer you the current template that you have that you could copy and paste this. I could add this on here and it's 
going to take me to the normal hyperlinks that are already on it. But if I'm on another page and I want to get to September, it's going to give me the original September. It's not going to hyperlink me to the duplicated page, if that makes sense. You can choose other templates. You can choose to import an image in here. Just if you want like a picture, let's say I'm wanting a mood board of what I want things to look like. You can insert a whole page of a picture. This will kind of slide you through the different templates that you can choose from, or you can view all templates and there's a ton of options that GoodNotes has. You can choose whether or not you want a portrait or landscape or what color paper you have. So you can choose if you want white, dark, all of them, yellow, and if you want it a certain size, which is like the good note standard size, or if you want to change it up, there's a lot of versatility within the app, which is really great. Now, this next button here, the little pencil with the circle is the most important one, I think. And this is the one that if you don't know how to work good notes, you're not going to understand why this planner isn't working. So I've had a lot of messages that people like purchase a digital planner and they're like, hey, Marissa, your hyperlinks don't work. And that is because of this button right here, which is standard within good notes. It's not on my planner thing. It's just how this works. This is the button that you would click when you want to start writing something. So right now I'm in like mouse mode where my pencil is acting as my finger and I can swipe through things without drawing. But whenever you want to start drawing, you have to click this little drawing button and that will bring up another menu, which again, we will go through. But that is when my pen will start acting as a pen versus if I click now the pencil turned into a line. So I'm turning my pencil off now it's a finger, if that makes sense. So the only way that your hyperlinks work is when your pencil is turned off because now my pencil is my finger and it can click through these different hyperlinks here. But if my pencil is on, I'm just gonna draw on these areas and it's not gonna actually click on the things that I want it to. That's like the number one thing that I always have to send to people if they've never used GoodNotes before, that is how to get your hyperlinks working. We're gonna go through all of these in a hot second. The last button that you have up here are these three dots. And this is kind of like your basic settings. So you could copy this page, you can rotate this page, change the template of it, you know, move this whole page to the trash. There's just a bunch of basic settings within the three dots and that is your main header here of buttons. Now, again, when we click this, we basically get a whole nother one. So to go through here, this one is your pencil. So this means that I'm going to be using my pen as a pencil. If you click on it, you can change which pen you wanna use. They all have a different style, as you can see, and you can change how sharp you want it to be or the pressure sensitivity of how hard you have to press down for it to kind of brush, especially with the brush pen. I always use the ball pen because I just like all my lines to be straight, but you can alter different settings for different ones. We have the fountain pen, the ball pen, the brush pen. This little side area is going to change depending on the button that you have pressed. So right now, since we're in the pen, you can choose your thickness. So if you want super thick lines or if you want medium lines or if you want it to be more of a fine point, you can change that. Also clicking on it again, you can alter what you consider this like, you know, less thickness to be versus your most thick. And you can change your color. You can kind of keep three up here, but you can always choose from other ones. There's presets that it automatically comes with. You can go to the custom one, of course, to click a custom one use the radial to really get nitty gritty. You can change your hex codes and your history will just show other pen colors that you've used recently. So you can kind of have, if you have a color coding system, you can have something already ready to go up here. If you know you're gonna be using these colors a lot, or you can of course switch all of them. But when you click the next button, which would be our eraser, this section changes to how big you want your eraser to be. So this is like the biggest, which you can see this little dot or medium or tiny. The next one is a highlighter and this works like a highlighter, but the same thing is how big you want that to be. So it could be the largest one, the medium one or the tiny one. And of course you can change colors. One thing that I like about the highlighter is that it actually is a highlighter. So if I write on here and then I go to use my highlighter, when you're doing it, it's going to kind of show up. And this is just because I wrote really, really big. So it's going to show up kind of on top of it. But once I let it go, it drops behind it and you can still read what you wrote. And that is like my favorite feature is that it works like a real highlighter. So this is me like writing normally. And the same thing, you can change your thickness here and you can highlight. Also, if you are drawing a line and you hold it, it'll make it straight for you. So many cool, fun things there. The next thing is a shape. So if you go to draw a shape 
and hold it. It'll kind of finish it for you. So that way your drawings don't look like mine and they look like real shapes. And then this next button, this dotted line like lasso is probably the most important one as well because this is how you're gonna like drag and drop certain things. So when I'm using my stickers, for example, I usually have both notebooks open because you can have multiple like tabs or notebooks open here. So I can flip from my planner here to my digital sticker set. So I can use my lasso to circle the sticker that I want to use, click on it. It gives you options here to resize it, delete it, but we're going to copy it. Then I can go back to my notebook, hard press, paste it. And now I have my sticker here. And then I can move it around and I can resize it to wherever you want it to be. And this also works for things that you've written. So if I need to move just my text around, I can select my text move it wherever I need it to be and leave it there. I can resize the text as well. Definitely a well-used button of mine. The next one is photos. So it'll bring up kind of like your most recent photos over here. And if you click on one, it'll import it as an image on top of this page that I can resize and mold into where I want it. So if I want it to, you know, fill this entire box just for the aesthetic purposes, I can do that. And it just adds an element there. And then you have a text mode. If I click somewhere, it'll bring up a little text box. You guys cannot see my keyboard right now, but I can type in hello. And it's going to show up really small right now until I change the way that I want it to look. So over here are my options. I can make this size super big. I can change the font to the fonts that they have available for me. I can move this. And then if I click on it again, I can change if I want it centered, the line spacing, you can change the color of your text, you can put a background behind your text, have advanced and change if you want a shadow behind that box, if you want borders, if you want rounded corners, or if you don't want rounded corners, you can change your background color. So you can really like customize little text in here. And that's what these are, this Marissa Nicole video, it's just like a text box that I made and I copied and pasted a bunch. And then this is like a pointer, essentially. <laughs> So you can choose if you want it to like follow you. So if you're trying to show someone how to do something, for example, like through this video, I could have been doing this of like, so you're going to want to circle the leaf and then you'll move it to where you want it to go. And then you'll double click, etc. So you can kind of like put people through a tutorial or you can just have a pointer. So showing what's happening, especially if you're in like presentation mode and you're wanting to show people what you're doing because this app is very versatile. A lot of people use it for digital planning, but a lot of people use it for a bunch of other stuff that is not digital planning. But that is it for our beginner entry level tutorial walkthrough of GoodNotes. I really just wanted to focus on the buttons because they're just icons. So it is kind of hard to know what they all do unless you've messed around with them and you figure it out. I did of course want to show the important ones and the ones that always trip people up or the ones that I use most often. Again, this app is used for so much more than just digital planning. So there are things that I just don't use because I really only use it for digital planning. So I'm sure that there's other people out there that really love that voice memo button, but I have never used it. <laughs> the possibilities are really endless. And I just hope that this was helpful to anyone who has never used GoodNotes, who has been on the fence of using GoodNotes or has been wanting to get into digital planning and just not sure where to start or how to start. So again, if you have any questions about GoodNotes, something that I didn't fully explain or something that you still don't really understand, let me know. If you also have other ideas or requests for more like good notes or digital planning tutorials, let me know. I definitely want to do one of how I basically have my sticker books as a separate notebook and like how I kind of pull from those because it's a huge time saver for me and I really like that I've done that. But let me know if there's anything else. If you liked this video and you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe down below because I do tons of other videos like this, my monthly resets, if we do plan with me's, just daily vlogs, a whole bunch of fun stuff. But I love you guys so much more than you'll ever know and I will see you in the next video. Bye.